welcome back to Talk Salem, where we're discussing the biggest local and national stories. Joining me are Dee Haas and Suzanne Pepper. Thanks very much for staying with us. I'm going to have a little bit of a travel-themed segment now. Apparently, research from um, the insurance company Churchill has found that 42% of Brits think that traffic calming measures do work, but just under half of Brits say they damage their cars, and a quarter of people say they've experienced this damage firsthand. So, Suzanne, what do you think of speed bumps, chevrons, all of that stuff? I think it was interesting research when they said if you do away with white lines, down the middle of roads, apparently, people drive more safely. Hmm. All I, right. It's, that was one of the latest bits of research I saw came out, and I think that's because you're not quite sure <laughs> where you are. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, some speed bumps are really quite high, but mm. clearly, if they're damaging your car when you're going over them, you're going too fast. That's the point of them. Mm. I, think they're, yeah. I think they're engineered so that they shouldn't damage your car when you go over them. And I guess really what that research shows is that, yeah, I'm really in favour of uh, traffic calming, but can you just not do it in my area, please? <laughs> you know, it's a bit, it's a bit nimbish, if you like, in that yeah, way. Yeah, I suppose. Um, Has your car ever been damaged by something like this? No. No. OK, you're a very safe driver, are you? No. I didn't say that. <laughs> Don't correlate. I just said my car's never been damaged by speed. Okay, not, not to knowledge anyway. No, I think it depends how high your car is. Yes, I know. You know, if you drive a really sporty low car, you no, have no. to literally go very slowly over the bumps. But if you've got something tall and yep. high off the ground, you maybe. just go straight yeah. over and you don't even notice them. And that's right. My daughter and son-in-law are both petrol heads. Daughter drives a um, BMW sports car. Son-in-law's right. got a modified, you know, lowered. Mm. flashing lights underneath what we call the oh toaster God. and all that stuff I know <laughs> um, and they do I mean they can get stuck they make nasty scraping noises they, they so they just across. have to be aware of what they're doing yeah. bizarrely of course they're quite safe drivers because their insurance premiums are through the roof because they're driving modified cars mm. oh God and they are very very noticeable to everybody <laughs> If you're waving a red flag above your car, you do not want to do anything daft. Mm. But I think, you know, uh, speed bumps, sleeping policemen, whatever they're called now, they're OK as long as the, the um, you know, the, the lines are painted and everything. And you just be sensible about mm. it. What I find strange is, some, have you noticed how sometimes on a road there will be a whole row of these kind of bumps and they'll be fine, but then there'll be one, this one bump <laughs> that's just much bigger than all the other ones. And you think, what do they have, like, leftover kind of road stuff that they were like, oh, we'll just bit. put it here then. It's usually absolutely <laughs> covered in scrapes as well. And you just think, I don't understand what happened, or this kind of it just went mad. <laughs> no, you know when they're doing that body search thing, they might have a quick look under that one that's oh. much higher than anything else. You never know what's under there. The <laughs> Moving on, in nice. Portsmouth, um, people who go in bus lane or bus lane jumpers, which is a new new word for them, are they, I don't know, are they related to bus lane cardigans or something? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, <laughs> accused of preventing better public transport in Portsmouth. Um, so we've had on the show before a talk about you know whether the bus lanes in Portsmouth, which are often 24 hours, should be changed. And they've also recently installed cameras as well to catch people who are going in bus lanes. What are you in favour of bus lanes generally? Just gauging the. Um, not really. It's a bit. There are a lot of times when you think there is no point. I understand the bit about trying to get public transport through more quickly, but I think, if, bizarrely, if there was more public transport, you get more cars off the road, then you would be able to get the buses through more quickly. Right. So I think they're kind of backing a loser here. We know public transport's dropping because the subsidies are dropping. Mm. The few buses that there are are going a bit more quickly. Mm -hmm. OK. What do you think? Oh, well, I yeah. think that you need the bus lanes because otherwise people won't take the bus if they think it's just going to get stuck in traffic. So. And I'm all for public transport. I mean, with the, in, in the CPRE, um, where we campaign quite a lot for sustainable transport, and especially in rural areas, where there might be people who don't have a car and cannot get out of their village to go and do their weekly shop. And, um, you know, there's, the buses are getting fewer and more far between, really. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm in favour of the bus lane, and I think you have to have time, you know, you have to have um, uh, times on it so that there might be times of the day when you can go into it. I know they do that in London, but um, it may be a bit silly to have them for 24 hours a day. But um, at peak times, it's really good if buses can get keep to their timetable because more people will use them if they're reliable. And I'm afraid that's, you know, we've got so much traffic on the road. 
and especially in this part of the world we've got more and more traffic and the road the infrastructure is is falling apart it's not looked after really and um, we're building more houses and therefore we need better roads if not more there have been studies done that say the more roads you have the more traffic you get so you have to be a bit careful with that <laughs> but I think the quality of the roads needs to be improved. What do you mean by the quality? Do you mean better surface or just wider, perhaps? Um, yeah, I think, I think the engineers are very clever these days. So things like roundabouts and flyovers and overpasses and stuff like that. Um, there's been one put in, in Basingstoke recently, which has freed up the traffic no end at, um, in the rush hour. Because um, before that, everyone was queuing up to get onto the roundabout, and it was a real no, no, you have to avoid that area um, in the rush hour. So I think it's just a lot to do. You know, you don't need more and more lanes. You just need it to be, you know, you need the lights to be sorted so that they let people in and out better and that kind of thing. But I, I, I think the bus lanes are good. Do you have any kind of traffic bugbears? Oh, Gosport is a traffic bugbear, as oh, you right, well okay. know. So we've got two area. roads. Yeah, we've got, we've got two roads in and off the often on the peninsula that's it yes mm. um the changes to newgate lane have made a lot of difference and speeded up traffic going to fairham we simply have no other way to get off you know in and out of the peninsula and most people leave the peninsula to work do they make maybe a tunnel or a bridge between gosport and portsmouth well they've tried i mean the trouble is to get it within with a sensible slope you kind of would have to start building it at fairham well they and it's they not it, have a lift or stairs or they something? could i don't know but a lot of people use the ferry. Yeah. Very useful because, yeah. you know, and, and bicycles, we're a big bicycling town. Mm. Um, and so when they, if they work in Portsmouth, they do that or they go to Portsmouth to use the um, trains. I get the bus, the E1 or E2 bus, which is the one that runs up the BRT, the old railway line, into Fairham. And that's very yeah. speedy because yeah. that's right off the road then. Mm. You don't have to worry about bus lanes or anything mm. else. It's, it's actually it's totally lane, separate, yeah. isn't yeah. it? It's absolutely yeah. separate. Much and better. that is a very forward-thinking way of doing it, if you mm. like. It's just all that's going down here are emergency vehicles and buses. But the trouble, I mean, the Gosport situation is really interesting because that, that lack of access is really putting a complete stop to any, you know, economic development or yep. housing or anything mm. like that. There, We had a meeting, actually, with Gosport's MP the other day, and we, we drove in very happily and... <laughs> Then we had to get the out. meeting and then we tried to escape. And that was very difficult. Oh, it took yeah. about an hour to get yeah. out. Um, and she was saying at the time, um, you know, one of our main problems is access because it's just stopping anything from happening um, in the Gosport area. That's why the Gosport, problem. one of the reasons Gosport is a very popular place to retire to is that it's flat. We have a lot of low cost housing there. One of the reasons we have low cost housing is that there are no jobs in Gosport, people have to commute for work. Mm. Yeah. I shouldn't yeah. say there are no jobs, there are jobs, but you know, the majority of people commute for work. Mm. And that keeps the house prices low. Mm. Mm. And they are, but they are trying to create jobs. Oh, yeah, of course. They've got days yes. and everything. Yes, yes. that's yeah. right. Yeah. Local yeah. jobs in the borough. But I think they, they need to improve the access. Yeah. And the public transport. I don't think yes. you'll find many people that will disagree with Absolutely that. Not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely. Um, moving on now, it's a sort of another um, transport story, although not quite. Oh, I've lost my bit of paper. It must be here. Oh, here we are. <laughs> so, youngsters that build kit car in Hampshire Police Project. This is the story of some young, some youth, um, who often they've been kind of troubled youths or have been kind of know, know the police because they've been involved in antisocial behaviour or what's described as low-level criminality and they go to they've often been expelled from normal schools and they've been moved into kind of special education schools that are different and now a whole bunch of these youngsters have involved involved in this project which has got them to build these sort of small electric racing cars and once they've built the cars then in a couple of weeks time they're actually going to go to goodwood racing track and race them again amongst each other yeah. and that sort of thing so some people would say brilliant this is such a great way to get these young kids who haven't really engaged in mainstream education to not only learn new skills but also um, to kind of forge bonds with the police because the police are involved in the whole building mm. it and they build it mm. on at HMS Sultan with help from kind of Navy engineers and whatnot and other people would say it's not fair why don't the good children get to do this that's a good I point. Th I, I, like, I think it's great that yeah. they're doing that. It's really good. And I think the relationships between the police and them, that's a good thing to build. And I think giving them some skills 
so they can just maybe when they've done that and they can say well I've I've done this and therefore maybe get an apprenticeship and, as a mechanic or something you know I think it's it's giving them access to more work possibly more education and getting them to understand that there is more to life you know that they haven't been left behind because I think a lot of the naughty children just feel they've been left on the bottom of the pile but um, and I, you know, in in an ideal world, it would be nice for the bright ones to also have the same, <laughs> or at least same the good access ones. <laughs> or the good ones or whatever. Yes. They, I mean, they do have, you know, it is this thing about who has which opportunity. Mm. I think we're quite lucky with our police crime commissioner in Hampshire because he is very keen on getting youth involved. He has the youth courts mm. where, they, where they sort of mm. stand in judgment on each other. They have peer judgment. And um, he's keen on reducing youth reoffending and everything. Mm. And anything, actually, that gets them engaged, gets them out and about, gets them to meet different people out of that same circle of friends that were misbehaving has got to be a good thing because mm. it's much more cost effective for the economy as well, let alone doing wonderful things for the kids. So we're both in favour. Oh, hmm. We've got a big, big tick on that, I think. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in just a minute, we're going to talk a bit about some of the things that you've got going on at CPRE Hampshire. Uh, but just really briefly, before we go to the break, just explain what is CPRE Hampshire? Well, CPRE stands for Campaign to Protect Rural England, and we're the Hampshire branch. And what we, we do a lot of different things. So we, um, we help local communities um, on planning problems they might have. Um, we help, we, we talk to um, um, parish councils and help them with their neighborhood planning and um, with, with work on their local plans. We work, you know, we're doing a lot of planning stuff. We're also doing a lot of environmental things like that as well. We talk about affordable housing and transport. So it's wide. It in lots of rural, different kind of rural, rural but wide. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, Dee. Well, we'll talk much more about that. Of course, it's your 50th anniversary, so yes. we'll discuss that after the break. Yeah. But make sure if you've got stories of your own that you think we should be talking about, do get in touch. Our email address is talk at thatsolent.com or you can tweet us as well. But we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> 